Welcome back to Starcast Ecker Marks, the only Stars fan led podcast. We're back with Chris here today. I'm Ryan, and what a game by the Stars. Yes, I hate McKinnon. He can die. <laughs> oh, you know what? We didn't even talk about uh, a, thing to, a phrase to add to the end of that sentence. I'm sure we'll come up with something by the end of the podcast, whatever. Figure something out. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out. Okay, so, anyways, I have never been so happy to be proven wrong. Because, you know, when we were doing the season preview, or season preview, the round two predictions and everything, I was saying that I didn't think that the Stars could keep up with the Avalanche. Well, apparently we can, in just about every category. <laughs> well, what's happening, in my opinion, is the Stars are exposing the Avalanche's depth. They have none. They have Nathan McKinnon, Landis Cog, McCarr, and Graves. And those are their those are their four players. And after that, there's nobody. And the Stars are taking advantage of them. Rantanen. He wasn't even in this game. He was doing yeah. nothing. I really think that they missed uh, Eric Johnson today. Like, they re... I, th- I think he's, like, number five or number six on their death chart. But... And, I mean, you could see, even with the Stars in the Round Robin series, uh, before we started the playoffs, and even before that, we were complaining about missing Johns, and we were complaining about how Sekera has been was playing bad, especially that one game. Um, side note, he's been playing a lot better. I've noticed Sekera a lot of defensive and plays. and Fadoon had a good game yes. today. Fadoon had a great two-on-one that he stopped, so I've been really impressed by both of them, and they've played a lot more, too. Now, it, now I think Fadoon is playing too many minutes to where he's losing his effectiveness. I I would scale it back maybe just a little bit, but other than that, this was like a complete game for the Stars. Um, We knew that they were going to push back in the first period of yeah, they game two. push back Oh my hard. gosh, yeah, they... I mean, and if it wasn't for our amazing goaltender, Dobby, there's no chance we're in this game at all. It, it should have been four goals in the first at least. Dobby saved our lives in the first period. There's no way it should have been 1-0. Praise to the almighty, holy, there is a Mr. Hudobin. He has played four outstanding games in a row. He has been five. great. Five. Yeah, five more like. Yeah, so so that's something that we keep forgetting to mention, is that we're on a five-game winning streak in the playoffs. Yep. Three against the Flames, and then two against the Avalanche. And... We were all, I mean, in, myself included, we were all scared that Colorado was going to wipe the floor with us considering they destroyed Arizona in the last two games, 14-2 to two in goals. So I guess that speaks more to how terrible the Arizona Coyotes were. But, man, it, I have never been so happy to be proven wrong. I'll go yeah. back to that. Anyways, so let's go back to Doby. Doby. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Doby, Doby, Doby. Out of the first period, there were 20 shots from the Colorado Avalanche. Just like we said, they came out hard. But I can't remember the last time there's been 20 shots in the first period of a game. I, I can't remember a game like that at all. It was so lopsided. And he saved all but one. He saved 19 shots in the first period. And honestly, if it weren't for his play in the first period where we were just trying to get our legs under us, or I guess we were just trying to outlast the momentum and the attack of the Colorado Avalanche for trying to get revenge for losing that first game, man, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have won this game. It's at least 3-0. At least with with an, with an average to good I, goaltender, it's at least three zero abs after well, the I, period. Well, I I count I counted at least five. I was thinking it would there were like four good shots that I thought for sure would go oh, in, yeah. and it would have been five to nothing compared to one to zero. And because of that outstanding performance from our goaltenders again, and you know we keep thinking you no know, maybe this team has better goaltending than us. No, not a I, chance. Uh, I don't. I don't think there's another team right now that has a better goaltending tandem than the Dallas Stars. And actually, right now, it's all Hudobin. It's not even Just Ben Bishop. Just Hudobin right now. He's the best <laughs> goaltender in the playoffs, in my opinion. Even even from Markstrom, especially from his last game. Well, and everybody thinks that he's so young and everything, but he's only oh, but he's 35. Yeah. He's, a, he's an old boy. Yeah, and, you know, we'll 
everyone was talking about before all of this happened, all the COVID stuff, when we were talking about this return to play action and everything, is which team would benefit the most? And a lot of a lot of you know commentators are saying, oh well, it's going to benefit teams like uh, like Carolina with a bunch of young guns and everything. And obviously that has been proven false by the Dallas Stars with the play of their veterans. One, Hudobin, and then two, I'll add Mr. Joe Pavalski. I mean, just in the playoffs, he has earned his seven million dollars, in my opinion. Oh yeah, he definitely. he. Get this. So NBC is all, you know, goo goo gaga over Nathan Mc- or Nathan McKinnon. Uh, no, yeah, Nathan yeah, McKinnon. Nathan McKinnon. I, I almost said Kale McKinnon. Sorry. How'd you forget so. his name? I know. I, they <laughs> said it like. So many yeah, times. I know. Like, I heard it like. Uh, I'm very curious. I might go back and actually like count how many times they said. I his had name. to actually but, stop watching the intermission reports. I couldn't watch them. I turned them off. I, I turned off the TV. Yeah. <laughs> and looked at the scoreboard to see when it started again. Right. But he has as many goals as Nathan McKinnon. In the playoffs, he has yeah. as many goals has seven. in the playoffs. Oh my goodness. I understand that he's winning the the I guess the points race in the playoffs. But you there are so many stars that are outperforming themselves from what we were expecting them. Pavalski has seven goals. Haskinen we kind of expected, but still he's outperforming even himself with 14 points i mean oh my goodness stop talking about nathan mckinnon start right, talking rant about doby doby again this game so like i said last game it's not just the big saves that he made i can't think of one juicy rebound that he gave up he he held on to so many pucks so many up on his shoulders that he clamps down on with the glove so many kicks out with the pad all the way to the point it was just great saves he was putting on a clinic today it was outstanding to watch i, I just can't believe the the play of this guy i mean I, I mean we all knew he was good and we were like uh, you know m- you know even myself included talking about him was his stats were so good because he was only playing half of the time and, you know, he might have been playing against lesser teams or so. I have nothing to back that up on. I haven't done my research on that. But uh, he he led the league in save percentage this year as a ba- as the backup goaltender for the Stars. And, oh, my goodness, has he shown oh, yeah. up in the playoffs Proven for that us. wrong. He's got, he's got the high, most highly potent offense in the league. And he's got a 930 save percentage against him. And the only reason there's even five goals is because of the arguably best player on the in the league that's on the ice against him nathan mckinnon nathan mckinnon with five points on five av, avs goals in this uh in these playoffs yeah just outstanding work outstanding work from that man i really hope we keep him <laughs> i still and, don't think there's a chance i hope we do too but i think there's no way he's worth way too much money now yeah he if he takes us even to the conference finals and we end up winning this series, uh, he's going to be looking, I would think, at least three and a half million plus uh, right. for his for his next contract. I mean, I understand he's only thirty five. He's only he's already thirty five, but he's got still, a good three years he, he deserves it. Least. Yeah. Now, I you know a thought crossed my mind about this, and then it was really funny because the NBC announcers also mentioned this as well, but. You know, I haven't really thought about this, but this may be Hud- one of Hudobin's last chances to actually get a Stanley Cup ring. I don't, I, I can't tell you if he's gotten one or not. Has he gotten one? Do you know? I don't believe so. I think he was on Boston, but I think he left Boston, like, just before or after they got it. I can look it up real quick while you keep talking about how great he is, if you want. Yeah, I'll rave on him as much as, as we want. So... Out of the 60 minutes that he played today, he's got, he saved 38 out of 40. <laughs> Over 40 shots again. The Stars are not really known for that, but he's still doing it. Um, he saved 30 for 30 out of even strength. He saved 8 for 10 on the power play. And then his save percentage was a whopping 95%. 95%. That is absolutely insane. And, you know, to give credit to the Stars as well, uh, they played, at least not in the first period, but in the, definitely in the third period, more so than the second, because they kind of wrapped it up and shook it down. 
but none of the stars ended below zero today in their plus minus. So that tells me that if they were out there for a goal against, they made up for it with by being out on the ice when a goal was scored. So just fantastic numbers and from Hudobin. Yeah. Great defense in the third period. And, uh, man, Dobby is my daddy, as your little thing says right there. <laughs> I yes. agree. So he did technically win a ring in 2011, but he never got into a game. So he has a he has a ring for being with Boston during 2011, but it, I, I'm sure he has an asterisk an asterisk on that ring. <laughs> oh well, he would have no asterisk on this ring if he oh. took us and won the Stanley <laughs> Cup. He, there were no <laughs> way he get the playoff MVP right now the way he's playing if he keeps doing it. Well, and you know if you're this is the last thing I'll say about uh, about Dobby is if you're Rick Bonus and Ben Bishop is cleared to play and he's no longer unfit to play, do you just keep riding Hudobin until Hudobin has a bad game? Right, or, now, you de right now you definitely do, without a doubt. It, mean, would, it would take an absolute moron to take him out of the game right now. He's playing so hot, you ride him until he completely explodes, honestly. Right, and then, you know, Rick Bonus is doing an excellent job. We... We get on to him a lot for the way he is and everything like that. But honestly, he is, you know, he really is doing a lot better job. And me included, gave him a lot of crap for what what he's done. Oh, you know, some questionable decisions that, he, that he's made in the past. But I really got to give him credit right now. Ever since he called that uh, timeout in the Calgary game in game six, I've just had nothing to complain well, about he's, him he's, he's been finally excellent stopped doing all the garbage he was doing in the regular season so like during the season he's like changing the lines constantly so no one can get any groove like even if a line's playing decent it's getting flipped up because another line's playing bad he's finally playing Gurionov and hits for the minutes that they deserve and he's finally letting these guys play like it, it, it's been it's been frustrating during the season but you're, you're right as soon as as soon as the playoffs have come he's flipped on a dime and done everything i've been asking him to do for the whole season so i guess i've got nothing to complain about but i i really don't want to see his regular season coaching back again next year honestly yeah that's really interesting and uh another random tangent that's kind of on subject uh washington fired their head coach uh yeah was it this morning i think it might have been this morning or I yesterday i forget which one but uh, Todd Reardon's looking for a job, so that might be another opportunity for the Stars. All right, well, anyway, we'll leave that. We kind of meant that to be about Dobby, but we kind of in invested in uh, Rick Bonus. And... Yeah, yeah, that's what, I, that's what makes this podcast so much fun. ADHD here, people. All right, what was the next thing we were going to talk about? Penalties. It was a oh, yeah, freaking goodness. basketball yeah. game out there today. That was ridiculous. <laughs> there was like three or four touch fouls. Like, on, on both teams, like, total. There was a penalty on freaking Cogliano in the middle of the third period. He literally tapped the guy's gloves, and they sent him to the box. What a joke. These guys need to go back to Orlando and officiate some NBA games. Goodness. That being said, there was some terrible Stars penalties, too. But, oh, my gosh. These refs were so frustrating. Eight to three on power plays. Eight to three. That is not close. Avs had five straight power plays to end the game, and they score on none of them. So the Stars, after scoring yeah, the Stars on the first beat two, them at their own game today, and then played their own game in the third period and shut them down. So this was complete Stars domination right after the first period after Doby saved them. Second and third period, the Stars were demolishing them, and the Avs should feel embarrassed. You texted me during the game, and and we were talking about the penalties and everything, and. Uh, you know, everybody was really frustrated. And then you even said that a lot of the Avs fans were sitting there complaining about the fact that a lot of calls were yeah, not being made Avs fans are on the Stars. Talking about, like, how, and then... <laughs> how Stars are playing dirty. Like, okay, sorry, you've never played a checking team yet, and the Coyotes let you walk all over them. These Avalanche fans, goodness, they got to be so spoiled. They've never seen defense, I guess. And it shows that it it makes sense why we're doing so good against them. We're a checking team. We 4 0 them in the regular season. And when we're on our game, it seems like we're just going to destroy them. This team is built to kill a team like the Avs. This reminds me, actually, of the 
the Stars Blues. When we we were a fast paced team, the most exciting team in the NHL, and then we hit the Blues and bam, we can't go anywhere. They're checking us into the boards. We have no space. This is exactly what we did to the Avs today after the first period, and we we just totally embarrassed them. Well, and I'm glad you mentioned that because you. I felt like you were reading my mind there because I was thinking the exact same thing because we were talking about that series a long time ago when that happened and we were like, why are the Stars doing so bad? They were like the best team in the league. And then we ran into the Blues and we're like, all the Blues do is they're a checking team. That's what they do. And th they go down into the dirty areas of the of the offensive zone. They go and get the puck. They put it up, back up to the point. They shoot it from the point, and then they look for dirty, and disgusting you rebounds. Playoff series. And you know what? That is playoff hockey. And that is how you win. And you know what? Now the script is flipped. We used to be the Colorado Avalanche, and now well, we're Jim the Miller St. Louis Blues. Well, a great team because we still have that speed, and we have that skill. We have Jamie Benn in that top line who can get it done. We have these young guns who are fast as anything we, that can get it done, and we've got – Veterans like Pavelski and Corey Perry who can get it done. And it's changing every night. Last night it was the top line. This night it's Pavelski and the rest of the the rest of the depth. It's just it's an awesome team built by Jim Nill. I think the people who are calling for Jim Nill's heads are actually not watching the hockey game and they don't understand the team that's been built. This is a perfect playoff team and I think anyone who doesn't see that just doesn't understand how GMing works at all. And you know what? I wonder if he learned that. So after the Lindy Ruff area, when it was all run and gun, score six, seven, five goals every single game, maybe he I learned think, that. He's think maybe he's thinking, doubt. you know, without maybe a doubt he learned that. You know, well, and you know, he's thinking like maybe a regular season, really good team doesn't mean anything when you get to the playoffs. All you have to do is be in the top eight. So you could be the eighth seed. You could be the eighth seed and be a good playoff team and still go to the Stanley Cup Finals. So and we've obviously seen that in the past 10 years or so. Just because you're the best team in the NHL does not necessarily mean you go and win the Stanley Cup. The Stars in 1999 were one of the exceptions. But everybody was saying about Tampa Bay that Tampa Bay was a lock for the Cup last year. And what happened? They got swept in four. By the Columbus Blue Jackets, who were the eighth seed and were not expected at all to take that series. And it completely busted in my bracket, by the way, last yeah, year. Yeah, if was you look mad. at the acquisitions Jim Nill made after that playoff series with the Blues, he definitely learned from it. He picks up Cogliano. Like, who knows who Cogliano is? Why are we getting this random guy from the Ducks? He picks up Como. Why are we getting Como? He's a nobody from nobody team. But he, he saw their play. He knows that they're grinders and they're going to fight on the boards. And he built one of the, I think, the best checking line in, in the NHL right now. The, the best fourth line anywhere around. So I think he completely understood what he was doing when he was building those guys. Those weren't just, oh, I'll get these guys because we lost our other guys. He he wanted those guys for this playoff team. They were centerpieces. Every one of these players is a centerpiece. This is a it's a great team. This is this is making me more and more excited. More and more excited. Just with how this team is built and you know, completely blowing my expectations of what this series was going to happen and this is looking like a stanley cup playoff you know like a, a stanley cup contender team even more so than i thought during the calgary series i, th I thought we got away with the calgary series in a way but i think we're, we're asserting our dominance anything now. right now and we are manhandling these avalanche we are getting on top of them and making someone else other than the top line score and they can't do it Hey, guess what? Random tangents again. We started with penalties, and somehow well, we ended with penalties. Uh, checking line. Jim Neal and makes sense. We're yeah, in the yeah, ballpark. Okay. At okay, least yeah, I guess. we weren't in the ballpark with the Dobby one. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, wait. Ballpark is the wrong sport, Chris. This oh, is yeah. a hockey I'm podcast. I'm not even watching the Rangers anymore. Hey, I watched yeah. the first ten games, and it's just sad. yeah. Okay, let's stop talking yeah. about that. I'm happy right now. Let's stop talking about sad stuff. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we could talk about the Mavs. Yeah. Mavs are doing pretty good, Basketball. too. Basketball. Luka! Okay. Anyways. Anyways, so... Uh, what's next? Oh, yeah. we. I want to make a quick mention of a stat that stood out to me. Uh, 
first things first is the face-off percentage was completely yeah, against us today, which is again very too. odd. I'm not sure what was up. Well, I'm sure that will be talked about um, it, tomorrow. It honestly, on their it might day have been because of the amount of power plays that the other team had. So when they have the power plays, they're going to be more aggressive on the dot because they've got two good face-off guys. And they, the they offensive were, zone. They were on the power play yeah. for 16 minutes tonight, so that would that would make sense. All right, but the real one I really want to mention, and actually Dad pointed it out to me, and I'm glad he did because I, otherwise I wouldn't have recognized it. But the hits today, the hits today, and this kind of goes back to what we were talking about a second ago, 60 to 29 in hits. Welcome 60. to the Stanley Cup playoffs, That is Avalanche. twice. <laughs> yeah, no, no joke. Twice as much as the Avalanche. And if the Avalanche have any chance – of getting back in this series, I think it's going to have to be with physicality. They're going to have to answer us with our physicality. They can't do it. And you know what? This, that's what happened. That's and what right happened now they the can't. The Stars played the Blues all, all those years ago. We were talking about how we need to bring up Alexiak up onto the D pair. That was when he was the seventh man. And that was before we traded him to Pittsburgh. We are talking about how we need to bring him up just because we need some big guys. And we were talking about how we can match the physicality, and we couldn't do it. <laughs> So that series, it felt like we were scrambling the whole time. And I feel like it's going to feel like the same thing for the Avs. They've got no room, and they're just feeling frustrated that they can't score. That's the exact kind of hockey the Stars want to play. Well, and one more stat. In block shots, 21-4. to Stars defense going at it. 21-4. to If that doesn't tell you what this team is about, physicality-wise, first off, great goaltending, and then also the amount of block shots that we had. And I'm sure like more than half of those were in the third period. I, I could, I, I feel safe in saying that. But th this is why I'm, I'm, I've been never been more optimistic about this team since 1999. And, and just how the that just shows how the team is buying in. You're not gonna lay your your leg on the line to block a shot that's probably not going in if you're not 100 percent on with the team. So all these guys are 100% in. Right. There's no, oh, it's a COVID cup. No, these guys are going to win that COVID cup, and they're going to rub their COVID germs all over it. Uh, there was one other thing we were going to talk about. You remember what that was? Nathan McKinnon and how he can't stop scoring points. <laughs> yeah. Someone need, Corey Perry needs to take the little punk, <laughs> shove his head into the glass, and put his fist in his stupid little patchy beard. And just tell him to stop. <laughs> and if he doesn't stop, he's just going to do it again. It, I'm tired of it. He hasn't had his butt on the ice nearly enough. Every check against him needs to be finished. Every single one. We might take some slashing penalties against him. I don't care. Stop the man. He's... Okay, I know we were complaining about how he was mentioned so much in the NBC broadcast, but he's a freaking amazing hockey player. It's nuts. He's outstanding. Yeah. So we got to stop him, please. Please. Okay, rant over. Yay, rant! <laughs> okay, that was fantastic. Y you know, your little rant reminded me of that one scene in The Avengers when uh, Hulk is just going crazy and everything. And, you know, Robert Downey Jr. or Iron Man puts on the Hulk suit. Uh, that for The Iron Man Hulk suit. There, there's a specific name he gave it, but I forgot. He, and he's just sitting there, like, with a bunch of punches, like, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. That's yeah, what we exactly. need to do to McKinnon. Except it needs to be, like, except it needs to be, like, two or three Stars players. They're just going, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. <laughs> this is a joke, Avs fans. We don't want to injure him. We just want to make him feel uncomfortable. No, yeah, he is... It, you, you, and you know if there's any as fans listening to this podcast which i highly doubt there is but if you are y'all are so lucky we, we haven't had a player like that like nathan mckinnon since mike madonna in my opinion we haven't yeah, had someone that, someone that explosive stuff, that amazing a dancer he he's a power he was a power forward when he yeah. won the the art ross but nathan mckinnon is just it's beautiful to watch him play hockey it's so frustrating <laughs> It's yeah, it's it's not fair. You know, speaking of Corey Perry, there was that one play at the very beginning of the first period where he looked like you oh, know yeah, twenty two year old like... Corey Perry, and was just, I was like, ooh, I was like, please score, please score, please yeah. score. And I was Corey like, oh, Perry dang, and Vilsky both had pretty good games. Yeah.
It was fantastic. All right, I think we'll leave it at that. I think that's what do you good. Think? Yeah, it's pretty good. I, I think so too. All right, guys. Thank you all for listening this evening. Uh, you've been listening to Starcastic Marks, the only Stars fan-led podcast. This has been Ryan, joined by Chris. You can follow us on Twitter at StarcasticR, which I will do a better job of posting even more. It's been a busy co- past couple of days for me. I my real job. And then you can also like us on Facebook, and you can find us wherever you get your podcasts. Stars win again for the fifth time in a row. Heck yeah. With a final score of 5-2. to two. We'll see you guys again on Wednesday, hopefully, when game three happens. And who knows? Maybe we can go for the sweep. We'll see. Thank you all for exactly. listening. Y'all have yeah. a good evening. Yeah, really sad Canucks fan. They got slaughtered. Night-night. The lot. <laughs>